Today I've got quite the video, well at least quite the workload for me. I don't know how much of it will make it into the video. I am going to basically shuffle around all my servers, condense a couple, and upgrade drastically. Currently I have three servers. I have a Plex server, which you can watch the video here. I have a TrueNAS server. I can't remember if I did a video on that one. If I did, I'll put it up here. And uh, a little VM server. Right now actually running an X299 7980XE uh, Intel system. I had a Ryzen system in it, but apparently there was this weird bug with uh, I think it was specifically with the X570 chipset. System was restarting randomly. By the time I replaced it with a different system, the X299, someone had figured out what the problem was. It's like a glitch. Yeah, they, you can put a little thing into a grub and it will fix it. But it was too late, I already swapped it and I knew I was getting this board back. So I didn't really care. And I just kept running the X299. This board, dual Ice Lake Xeon, 64 cores total, 128 threads. Not an optimal configuration of RAM, but a lot of it. We got four 64 gig sticks and four 16 gig sticks, which is not ideal, especially considering this can hold 16 sticks. It's what I've got, and honestly, I'm not doing any high performance stuff on this. Big dims are fine. I mean, I, I don't care how many memory channels I'm using, really. Although, in the future, I'll probably fill them out at least with 16 gig ones and then um, maybe move to the 64 slowly. Problem is, these are like 100 bucks each right now. As DDR4 moves out of the server space into DDR5, I will switch over to those. In the meantime, I've got 64 gig and 16 gig sticks. I'm going to be shuffling a whole bunch of parts around and decommissioning my TrueNAS server and incorporating it into a VM since I'm going to have so many cores and so much memory and so many slots and everything. That'll remove an item from my rack. I have three 4U Rosewill server cases and I'm going to downsize that to just two. I've got some accessories for the build today. This is a cable that converts this funky dual NVMe link into U.2 connections and then I have these quite nice uh, IC Dock M.2 to U.2 converter boxes. I can use two Samsung 980 SSDs. Uh, they're one terabyte each. They're just going to be for uh, Proxmox. I'm just going to run them in a mirror. I've got a replacement HBA. The one I have installed is throwing up some errors. I don't know if it's actually the HBA or the expander or what. Either way, I'm going to replace this. this is a Fujitsu, but it's actually an LSI 9211 or something. I always forget which one, but it's like one of the older ones. Older ones are fine. It's just going to be plugged into hard drives. I run 15 hard drives in my NAS because that's what my Rosewell case can hold. I think I have eight 12 terabytes and seven 14 terabytes installed right now. I have a Tesla P4. As you can see, it's a compute card. There's no outputs on it. I'm going to eventually use this to give just video acceleration to VMs and stuff using the VGPU scripts that are available. Got a little 3D printed wind tunnel for it. I don't know how well that will work. The, the 60 millimeter Noctua's are not especially powerful. I thought I would never use this, but this ROG dual M.2 to PCI Express adapter board came with the motherboard I'm using in my uh, main system. And it just takes two cards. Most of these will take four and they'll uh, bifurcate the 16X slot into fours. This one does it, but it only uses half of it. So I don't know why they made it a 16X slot unless it's a power requirements thing. Either way, I'm going to use it in an 8X slot. <laughs> This one has dual Sabrent Rocket Pro or Plus two terabyte drives, whatever their fast ones are. I edit videos directly from SSDs on my NAS. This is going to be that storage. It's two two terabyte drives. I don't know if they're going to be in a mirror or striped. Doesn't really matter whatever works out better or faster for editing. That's what I'll do. These things are cloned to the hard drives all the time with true NAS. So it's not a big deal. If, um, it's in a mirror or a stripe. There's also a very heavy card with a, a massive heatsink on it. I have another card inside the system already, which has quad M.2s, and I'm going to be using those. It's pretty much going to be filled up with all Optane drives to accelerate metadata on either my main array, which has like my Plex server and stuff, and the array of drives that uh, are hooked up to my VM's storage. Uh, I don't need a lot of 
performance on the VM storage drive, so I don't use like a slog or anything like that. I'm also going to install a Corsair Commander Pro. The fan control on this motherboard is a little weird. I don't know if it's because I have the old BIOS or because I'm using engineering sample CPUs. I, I don't know what the deal is, but they, it just seems to run fans at weird speeds or ramp them up and down. I've already done the Noctua fix with the IPMI, which Noctua fans tend to run a lot slower than a server fan, so they tend to ramp up the speed and down, up and down because the IPMI goes, oh my God, the RPMs are too low. Let me jack it up, run it really fast and see if that clears whatever the blockage is or problem. And then it just slows it back down again. And it just keeps doing that because it doesn't know why the fans aren't operating like they should. So I told it they're like 200 RPM fans. There's guides on it. You can just Google it. I'm going to install a whole bunch of cards into the system. I think every card it slots going to be full except one. I really like the fact that this motherboard is just loaded with PCI Express slots. These are all 4.0 slots and they're all capable of bifurcation. A little weird in the uh, BIOS. They all claim to be able to do 4x4x4x4 implying there's 16x slots instead of 8 because obviously this would be 4 and 4. Turns out that you, yeah that was really confusing trying to figure out why I couldn't bifurcate this one. Finally I had to set one to 4444 4, 4, 4, and yeah they just have it listed as a 16x slot for some reason in the BIOS but either way bifurcation works. So I'm going to be bifurcating my two drives and the card with four. I have a card that does non-bifurcation, little side story here, because I bought a card that does four M.2s into one 16X slot. I had an old Super Micro board, an X9 series. They released a BIOS update to enable bifurcation and you can turn it on in the BIOS and it just doesn't work. You only see one drive. It's still in 16X mode. I ended up contacting Super Micro and they're just like, oh yeah, it doesn't work on that motherboard. The, the, why did you add it in a BIOS update? I don't get it. <laughs> Just leave it off it if it doesn't work. It was it was literally a patch to enable it and it doesn't do anything. And they're just like, nah, bro, that don't work. So whatever, I don't get it. <laughs> I ended up having to buy a card that has the four M.2 drives, but it has a PCI Express splitter chip on it. So instead of costing $70, it's like $380 or something. I'll be able to probably, I'll probably just throw that on eBay if I don't need it. I was going to buy a, an Optane DIMM for no reason, just because it's funny, because these things can take a whole bunch of Optane memory. But the more I read into it, you really can't you do it do anything with it. Unfortunately, they only run in two different modes. One where your memory is separate to it and it basically functions as a, a, like a cache for programs that are written for it specifically. And you can also run it in a mode where the RAM is used as a cache for your Optane and you end up having to have an equal amount of both. And it's really weird and there's no point to doing that in a normal situation. So I, yeah, it's, it's bizarre. So I was hoping I could just use it as basically an overflow from memory, like almost like a second tier of RAM where once it's filled, it'll start writing to the Optane or, or buffering or, um, swapping to it, but it doesn't seem to operate in that way. I know you can operate the Optane DIMMs as a drive and actually have it show up as a block device. That's not too beneficial since I already have some Optane drives and they're standalone. And the, the catch with that is that it's way more expensive to get these DIMMs. A 128 gig DIMM is $250 right now. Hopefully they drop in price now that Sapphire Rapids is out and there's like the newer generation. These are 3200 DDR4 sticks. Yeah, it's just not worth it, even as like just a joke to install them. Maybe one day when they get in the lower price, I'll buy one or a couple sticks just for fun and try and use them as a VM storage location on DIMMs or something dumb like that. I was actually waiting a little bit before doing this video because I had a super micro fan and heatsink on this one and I didn't, I wanted it to match. I like Noctua. So I bought a used Noctua one. This was like just open box that some guy tested and it didn't fit in his case, so he just sold it. So I got it for a pretty good discount for fans. So I'm gonna have all those running into the Corsair Commander. There are Linux tools to control the speeds on it. I don't need any fancy fan control. I just need it to be set to like, you know, 70% and just stay there. I'm gonna try 
this whole Corsair Commander thing under under Proxmox and see how that goes. My next task, I think, is going to be disassembling my VM system so that I can put this motherboard in it to keep it from getting destroyed while it's sitting out here. Here's my VM system. Like I said, it's an X299 right now. That's getting pulled. It's got a woefully undersized cooler for a 7980XE, but it's not doing too much work right now. Fractal Design Power Supply, I'm gonna pull this out. I'm gonna put in, I have a titanium 850 watt from Seasonic that I'm gonna put in. 850 watts should be fine, even though those are like massive CPUs. I found that the whole system without any cards or anything, just like the, the CPUs, pulls about 250 to 300 watts under like an all core load. So it shouldn't be a problem just running uh, a bunch of extra cards and a few more drives on, a, on an 850 watt. I'm going to keep these rear fans or Noctua's. The drives in here right now, I kind of like jokingly refer to them as hot spares. They're not actually hot spares. They are drives that I do actually keep around as cold spares for my server because uh, I have some 12s and 14s and I'm kind of building up a collection of 16s to slowly replace one of my pools with bigger drives. I actually just farm Chia on them since having drives running all the time doing very very little work is not a big deal i'm going to pull these out and these drives are going to go into my plex server which i'll just run as a harvester i've got a whole bunch of cards in here gpu uh hba nicks i'm going to just use one nick i'm going to pull out most of the stuff a whole bunch of random SATA drives here that are going to mostly going to transfer over to the new system. There's a SAS expander down here. I, I'm going to pull that out because I've actually been using a SAS expander card in the TrueNAS server. I'm not sure about these Dell ones, which I'm I'll put up a picture since this one's kind of buried. These ones are like pulled from some kind of NAS device that Dell sells and the community kind of figured out that you can reuse them as a standalone expander for cheap. But now regular expanders are really cheap. I was having weird disconnect issues. I've swapped out the expander, but like I said, I'm having HBA problems. So, uh, you know, it, it's probably the HBA, not even the expander. Either way, I'm gonna swap it out. And yeah, I'm gonna take out this motherboard. I'm gonna sell it. About 64 gigs of RAM in it that are like Corsair RGB sticks and stuff. So all this was with my old workstation, my daily driver. And I'm gonna just pull that out. Uh, all the cabling is a disaster in here because like while I was trying to fix it, I had to like do emergency swaps of the motherboard and the power supply and stuff like to try and solve the rebooting issues. All this is coming out and I'm just gonna go do that off camera because it's tedious. On to the true NAS server, exact same case. This one's filled up with 15 drives though. This one is from a Datto server, which I will put the video up here. It was a cool server and cool board. Actually, it's a pretty low power Xeon D system with onboard 10 gig and all sorts of cool stuff. Really cool board, I'm gonna sell that. This is the one I'm gonna put the Ice Lake system into. So I'm gonna pull the power supply motherboard, take out all the cables that I can and just redo everything from scratch. All right, so I've got everything crammed into this now seemingly very small for you chassis. Jumble of cables for all the drives. Unfortunately, without backplanes, you're kind of stuck running a million cables. What are you gonna do? They don't make a hot swap version of this, and if they did, it'd probably suck. Temporarily, I have both quad M.2 cards installed. I have to copy some files over in, in TrueNAS to the uh, to one of the other ones, and then I'll pull that out. Unfortunately, I'm using up a PCI Express slot for the SAS expander. It draws power from the slot. It doesn't actually use it in any way other than power. So it actually has a cable running from it to the card, the uh, normal SAS card. Uh, I just couldn't figure out a place to mount it where the wires weren't all in the way. So I ended up with just putting in slot. It also means I don't need the Molex connector running over to it. Got my 25 gig NIC installed. I also have this 10 gig copper adapter that I'm gonna put in one of the slots because I'm using a direct attach copper cable or direct attach cable to my computer at 25 gig. And then I also have the other port going to the 10 gig switch that I use. So that'll link up to the rest of the network. And I just use Proxmox to link those together and it effectively works like a switch anyway. I don't have the Tesla card installed right now because I need to copy those files. So once that slot's freed up, I'll 
have that available. I think the next step is to just power this up and make sure it's working and then I'll load it up into the rack and then I'll just put the drives that I took out of this one and I'll throw those in my Plex server. Finished all the work on the Plex server. That was the last thing I needed to do. I just loaded it with drives, put in an HBA, and uh, I also put in an uh, 80 millimeter fan to keep it cool. I was going to custom design one, but then I got lazy and just used the existing 120 millimeter print that I have and just chopped off the edges. I also installed a second rear 80 millimeter fan. I actually already cloned the drives and moved all the data around and all that stuff so everything's actually all done it's actually the next day yeah everything works fine um true nas is running fine in a vm i gave it 64 cores for no reason <laughs> you know it really needs a lot of speed for something now i just have to get this thing back in the rack which has a lot more space now that i took out the other 4u chassis 